Today we're doing a video on Jeppy again. Uh, Jeppy versus Jep Q, which is better? So we're up 6,500 to start the day because the market's bouncing off the 200 day moving average. Uh, this is a very significant point. I've been making tons of videos about it. Uh, you can see my Reddit wall, for example. I've been making uh, tons of videos. If you go to my profile, you can see that I wrote SPY is cold for a large move to occur. Please place your bets. S&P at 200 uh, day moving average. It's the yellow line here. Uh, lots of people just knock all these posts. They think that all these numbers are I'm selling and um, these are fake. They, they made so much. They took they made fun of this one so much by uh, making fun of my dots when they should just look at the merits. The dots correspond with bottoms in the market usually. Uh, so that's Reddit for you. Um, but 6,500, we're up. Screw Reddit. We're about the money, you know. So 1% uh, we're up. And we have Jeppy here. We have uh, uh, almost 20,000 in Jeppy. But we also added to JetQ yesterday on a recommendation from Reddit. I've heard of JetQ before, and we're already up 2% in it. Um, but I just wanted to discuss the differences between Jeppy and JetQ. For me, um, see, obviously, Jeppy is more total return and JetQ is more tech related. But JetQ has a bigger dividend of 13.5% uh, roughly uh, versus JetBees, which is around 10 to 11. Um, but this had a lot, much bigger drawdown, uh, JetQ, than JetB because it is tech related. So if you go to JetBees dividend, you'll see that it is. Um, 12%. So it's a little under JEPQ, a percent and a half. And here's why I have more in JEPI than JEPQ. A, because JEPI is less volatile. But B, JEPQ is higher maintenance. So if you go to the maintenance tab, you'll see that the reason why we have more concentrated in JEPI is it has a 30% maintenance. JEPI, 30, 35% maintenance, pretty low. Whereas JEPQ, uh, JEPQ, has a 50% maintenance. See, 50. So for every thousand I put down in, in Jeppy, only 3,500 is, th only 350 is taken up by my brokerage account. For every thousand I put in JEPQ, $500 is taken up by my brokerage account. So that's almost, that's almost twice my, my buying power. Uh, and I cannot uh, mess with this available withdrawal number. I want to keep that always over 100 because if it goes to zero, you're on a margin call. So you keep it over 100 to be uh, comfortably, um, safe in your positions, but then you get more uh, margin power as a result, purchasing power. So this is why we like Jeppy. Uh, we like Jeppy because it's it's more diversified. It has a smaller yield, but it has higher lower maintenance. So you can put more money in it when you're running margin and it pays down this margin number here that you see below 227,000. But if you think that margin is risky, don't use margin. It's not for you. Fine. Uh, I use loans to get ahead just like all the other rich people did in their life. And so 15% on JEPQ minus the 5% interest I'm charged, 10% spread, it pays me to be in leverage as long as I don't have too much risk exposed. And that's why I like JEPQ. JEPQ has a little too much risk. It's more volatile, it's tech, and has 50% maintenance. And that's why it has 50% maintenance because it is volatile and it is tech. Um, let's go to its website. You can see JP Morgan. We're at JEPQ. We already did a video on JEPP -E and all of its uh, characteristics of its fund, if you see that video. So on JEPQ, I, I saw the main thing I saw was that uh, it uses uh, not only stocks in the NASDAQ to get its returns, uh, but it uses covered calls. So if you go look at um, portfolio, they'll show you that uh, not only do they have mostly tech concentrations here, it's communication. I mean, they have 1.5% uh, financials, 0.3 energy, 5% consumer stables, which is interesting because that's where they get uh, some of their dividend yield from. Consumer discretionary, um, that's a pretty high amount actually. But information technology, 40%. You know, again, communication, 12 So over 50% of the fund is tech related. So that's why it's going to be more volatile. Consumer staple, uh, discretionary is also volatile right now as consumers are, as we're facing a recession, people think consumers who are losing their jobs, employment is strong. They're not really losing their jobs, but um, when interest rates are higher and inflation is higher, it hurts the consumer. So that makes the consumer's uh, discretionary sector get hit more than others. 
And that's why also why this fund is more volatile than others. So um, we like JEBQ, we have a small amount in it, but we're not going to um, put too much in JEBQ because it is more risky and it has a higher maintenance. So we could only put um, a few of our dollars behind it without it sucking up all of our equity. This number here, available withdrawal. Uh, available withdrawal. So you got to always watch the available withdrawal number here. So uh, Jeppy, it makes us monthly about $142. Not bad, you know, but it's not much either. But when you add, that's a, it's a utility bill or a cable bill. But when you add all of them up together, they make about 8,000 a month. And our performance, um, we always have to end by showing our performance. We're up 20.46, whereas the market's up 9.6. The NASDAQ and the S&P is at 4.18. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you see why I'm choosing JetPi over JetQ. I think you should have some JetQ, but a smaller amount as it's more volatile and has higher maintenance. But if you want to take a risk on growth and tech and you think interest rates are falling, then tech's going to be the biggest beneficiary and that's where the bounce is going to be. And as you can see today, off that 200-day moving average, we're still bouncing and tech is going to be bouncing the hardest because it's the most oversold. Uh, you see here, BST is up a percent, and that's one of our tech holdings. So um, everyone needs to um, fangu up 7%. So tech is cheap. It's rallying, and, and JetQ is a way to play tech. Uh, and just watch your maintenance levels if you're running margin, and watch your volatility if you care about overall performance uh, being um, matched more to the S&P than the NASDAQ. If you match to the NASDAQ, you can win more in big years, but if it's a bear market, you can hurt your portfolio by the same token. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Once again, click like or subscribe if you did, and leave comments if, uh, on which do you think is better, JEPI or JEPQ below. Thank you.